Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ask Amber and in this series we've been working on our avatar in Blender from start to finish so that it's ready to port into Unity. And in this video I'm going to show you how to add hair and make sure that it all works out perfectly. Also I'm going to show you how to add ears and a tail. I can't wait to get started so let's jump right in. So far we've imported our body, we've gone over how to add an outfit, we've gone over a little bit on how to combine a few materials and make sure that our UV maps are correct so that we can add great textures in Unity. And now let's add some hair. So I'm going to go ahead and import a hairstyle that I have. So we've already talked about how all of the FBXs that I'm going to use with the assets are all contained within one folder and the textures that go with those are also contained in that same folder so they're really easy to find and all my textures are named properly so that when we get to Unity everything is going to make a lot of sense. So I'm going to go ahead and import an FBX. I'm going to navigate to that folder that has all of our FBXs in it and I'm going to go ahead and import my hair. Now it's not in the right spot and that's perfectly normal. I'm just going to go ahead and move it into the right spot using my navigation hotkeys. So I'm going to click G to move and that moves it around but I only want it to go up and down so I'm also going to click Z so that it moves on the Z axis and move it downwards until it seems to be in about the right spot that I want. I'm going to look at the side view and make sure that I can move it in the right spot so I'm going to click G again and then Y to move front and back. And what I like to do is I like to look from the underside to make sure that it lines up perfectly with her forehead. So I'm going to click G and then Y again so that it's in just the right spot. That looks perfect. Then if you want to do a little tiny bit of editing, you just select just the hair, not the armature. You can go into sculpt mode, make sure that your mirror is on right here up this little butterfly. Click X so that both sides are equally sculpted. And I'm don't need to do much on this at all because this hair is actually amazing the way that it is. But I'm just going to make it a little bit more round, maybe have it go a little bit in on the back. And when you're sculpting hair, make sure that you really only sculpt the areas that don't have bones already attached to them because if you sculpt an area that has bones, it might make your movements a little bit weird. And trust me, you don't want to re-rig hair. So I am just solely working on stuff around the top of the head, the scalp, the stuff that is not going to move, the stuff that's not going to wave around, nothing that is connected to a bone, just to make sure that it fits really well to her scalp and looks perfect. And that looks great. So I'm going to go back into object mode. And now I'm going to make sure I'm selected on the hair armature. And again, when you're fixing or posing an armature, you want to make sure that the armature that is selected is the one that is green. So you can see right here, the little green icon that says hair is the one that you're going to want to make sure is in here. And this one's easy because it's already named hair. You can pretty much find it. But if it's just a bunch of numbers, it's easiest if you look at the green because right here where it's the orange icon, that is not the armature that it is referencing because these two can have different names from each other, which in my opinion is a little silly. But just make sure that when you're fixing or posing a model that you're going for the one that has the little green armature symbol instead of the orange one. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that in our settings that all of these are unchecked. Absolutely nothing, nothing, nothing is checked. And I'm going to click OK and I'm going to fix my model. It's popping up this little error warning. This is perfectly normal. That just means it doesn't have like the hips or spine or anything because all this has is a head because it's just the hair. This is a totally fine warning. You can completely ignore it. Click OK. We're going to be merging all of our armature later anyway, so that doesn't matter at all. So now that I have my armature here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of this to hair and I'm going to go to my materials. I'm going to change this to hair and then I'm going to click this little yellow button because it doesn't already have an image attached. I'm going to click image texture. I'm going to open up an image texture that I saved into my image textures from earlier. And I'm going to select my blonde hair. And as you can see, the little tips are black because those are supposed to be alpha. So in a previous video, I showed you how to apply a separate alpha texture to use the black and white information to tell Blender where it should be see through and where it should be opaque. But in this video, I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way how to use the original alpha texture 
in order to read where is transparent and where is not so that we can get rid of these little black lines. So basically what you're going to do is go into the shading tab, which looks like this. This is the same as your material right here. And you have all of these different things connected to it. This is the hair. It is the image that we just attached. And as you can see, it has a little dot that says alpha. And all I'm going to do is drag that alpha down here to the alpha section. Now this works because this texture is a PNG with a transparency. So it's going to read the transparency of this alpha and put it as a transparency on the material as well. Then you're going to scroll down here where it says settings and you're going to change the blend mode to alpha clip. Now this would be different if you had something with shades of gray. In that situation, you would do alpha blend because it will read black, white, and gray. Alpha clip will literally just clip out any parts that are black and white or see-through and not see-through. So we're going to use alpha clip in this situation because we just want it to read just the very basic information so that we can get those little black tips right off. Then I'm going to go back to layout. You can see where the edges of the actual polygons are when it's selected, but you can see that it also has the see-through transparency with none of those black edges, and it gives you a really good idea of what this is going to look like in Unity. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the custom model creation, and I'm going to merge my armatures together. But as you can see, the base and the two merge are mixed, so I'm going to go ahead and select regular armature. That's the one that has my body and all of my clothing on it as my base, and I'm going to merge the hair onto the base. I'm going to make sure that everything is unchecked except merge all bones, and I'm going to click Merge Armatures. Now my hair is a part of my body. It's on the same armature. I have one singular armature with all of my different things on it. Let's fix the model one more time. Honestly, I fix the model probably more often than you need to because I just want to make sure that everything is going to work out. I also very often check to make sure that all of these are still unchecked just so that it doesn't merge all of your meshes that you've worked so hard to keep separate all together at once. And now that we have our hair, I'm just going to go ahead and start the pose mode and make sure that the hair moves as expected and it looks like it does. I'm also going to move the head to make sure that it parented correctly to the head, which it did. Perfect. I'm going to stop pose mode and the hair is now officially added. So now I happen to have a pair of ears and tail that use the exact same hair texture as my hair. So I'm going to go ahead and add the ears and tail now and I'm going to merge those armatures onto my base armature as well. So I'm going to go to import FBX. I'm going to import my ears. I'm going to click S to size them down a little bit. G and then Z to move on the Z axis and move them down. I'm going to look at the side view. I'm going to click G and then Y to move them forward and back and just keep moving them around until they are in the spot that I think is really great. Now what happens if I think these ears are a little bit too close together and I want them to be either smaller or bigger or wider apart? It's a really easy fix. So we're going to take this brand new armature that we just brought in and we're going to go ahead and fix it. So armature 006. And just to confirm, I'm going to toggle this down. And you see the little green icon, armature 006. And I'm going to go ahead and fix that model. I'm going to click OK to this error message. No worries. And sometimes when you fix your model, it likes to turn on the armature of a different part of your model. I'm just going to hide that. And I'm going to turn back on the armature for these ears. And what I'm going to do while I still have armature 006 selected, I'm going to start pose mode. I'm going to make sure that my X mirror is on because I want to be sure to have everything identically on both sides. And you can use your shortcut keys for moving and scaling in this area as well. So I'm going to click G and then I'm going to click X to have it go side to side. And I'm going to move it out to the side. And as you can see, it's moving both sides at once, which is exactly what I want. And then I also want to rotate it a little bit so that they're pointed up a little bit more. And this is all just preference. You can do exactly what you want. You don't have to stick with the shape that I'm doing. This is where the creativity of making an avatar comes from. So I'm also going to move them forward again a little bit. And I'm just using this base bone because all the other bones are connected to it and they will absolutely stay with them. So now that I think that that is where I want it. So now I'm going to apply this as my rest pose for this armature. And once that applies, that is now the permanent resting position for these ears. Now, if I want to move them, I can still move them forward and I don't have to apply a rest pose or anything. I can still move them. I can still put them in the spot that I want. 
but I think that this is a good spot for now. I'm going to change the name of these to ears and then I'm going to edit the materials. So as I said before, the texture for these ears matches the texture of my hair. So where it says fur, I'm simply going to go to this little ball right here and I'm going to apply the exact same texture and link it to my hair. So I'm just going to type in hair and I'm going to click my hair material and then it will apply the same texture and the same settings for my hair onto the ears. And when I edit this one texture in Unity later, it will edit both textures at once, which is fantastic. I also have the benefit of having a metals already, so for the jewelry part, I am also going to change that part to metals, which I already have available. So this is the metal that's already on my piercings and my choker and a few other metal areas. So when I edit those, it will edit these as well. So I didn't have to do anything with the materials on these ears, which is one of the reasons why I love them so much. I can just easily add my other materials on there and they're ready to go. Now that my ears are all set up, I'm going to go ahead and merge my armatures. I'm going to merge my base armature, which is armature, right here, to armature 006, right here. I'm going to make sure join meshes and remove zero weight bones are unchecked, and I'm going to check merge all bones and merge my armatures. And that looks really great. Next, I'm going to add my tail and do the same thing. So I'm going to import an FBX. I'm going to find my tail that's already in the same folder. It looks like it's in a pretty good position already. I'm happy with how that looks. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this model, make sure that all everything is unchecked. I'm going to click OK to this error message. Again, don't worry about it. Then I'm going to find my tail. I'm going to rename it in lowercase because that's what I prefer. I'm also going to take the material for the tail and I'm going to do my little drop down trick where I'm going to link in the hair texture to this as well. That way, now I have the hair texture on the ears, the tail, and the hair. So if I edit this one material in Unity, it will edit all three together. Now all there's left to do is just to merge the tail onto the body. I'm going to make sure armature is the base, fluffy tail is to merge, merge all bones, ready to go, merge armatures. Now I'm going to start the pose mode, make sure that everything works the way that it should, and see how the bones are not connected to the tail. This is because I didn't refix my model. So I'm going to go ahead and stop pose mode, and I'm going to fix my model, and it will just link everything together like magic. I love the cats plugin for this reason because it solves so many problems with one click of a button. Now when I start pose mode and I click on the tail, it's totally connected, everything is working, everything is good, all from one simple click. Let's test the ears and make sure that they work as well. Yep, they are working, and let's make sure the little jewelry works as well. That's working too. Okay, now I can stop pose mode, and here we go. My avatar is ready to go with ears and tail and hair. I hope that this was really helpful for you. I hope that you learned something out of this. And if you want more of how to create your avatar in Blender to get it all ready to go into Unity, feel free to check out all the other videos in this series. And if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments below or join my Discord, which is linked in the description. I would like to thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one.